Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 9, and in this episode I will cover rectifying mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes, not just in model engineering, in life in general. But in model engineering it's very easy to make a serious mistake, like this one. Someone has drilled the holes in the wrong place in this engine bed plate. Mistakes like this can and will occur frequently if you're not watching what you're doing, or you're distracted, or you're rushing, or maybe you're just not very good at this sort of thing. In which case I would recommend taking up another hobby, or doing a lot of practice. If you put the hours in, and practice on scrap pieces of metal, it's surprising how much easier it is to drill a hole in the right place. This tutorial is about rectifying mistakes, and in this case the hole will need to be plugged. It is vital that you use the same material to plug the hole. For instance, if it's a cast iron bed plate like you see here, you must use cast iron. Don't use steel, otherwise when you re-drill the hole in the correct position, the drill will wander into the softer material, which in this case is cast iron. Here you see me machining a piece of cast iron bar. This is a bit wasteful, but I could not get the cast iron anywhere near the diameter that I required. The smallest piece I could get was one inch in diameter. I have to turn it down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, which is the diameter of the holes that are drilled in the wrong place on the bed plate. Making the plugs for the bed plate is a very simple process. All I'm doing is turning down this one inch diameter piece of cast iron to 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter. First of all I use the centre drill to centre the work, and here I'm using a live centre to support the work while I machine it. Quite a lot has to come off here, it will make plenty of swarf, but it's going to be worth it in the end. I need to produce four cast iron plugs, 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and one inch long. And at the moment I'm going through the process of reducing this bar. I'm also showing that if you take deep cuts, the lathe is likely to chatter. This is an old Boxford lathe that I'm using, and it really is taking slightly more than it's designed to do here. So if you listen to the background noise, you will hear a harmonic frequency. This is called chatter, and when you hear this, it's best to back off the lathe tool. Much patience is required when using a lathe. If you rush it, you will spoil the work. You may even break off the tool tip and have to replace it and you will end up with a very bad surface finish to the work. The surface finish in this case is not important because it's going to be used to plug a hole in an engine base plate. The point I'm trying to get across is take your time when using a lathe because if you foul up, break the tool, it will only take longer because you have to change the tool. A word about machining tolerances. As a beginner, you will be very confused by this. If you turn a shaft 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and try and put this piece into a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole, it's not going to go in without being forced in. So you do need to think about this. There are charts available. I would recommend buying a Zeus book, that's Z-E-U-S as in the Greek God, which has all the tolerances you need. Fitting a plug like this into a hole in a piece of cast iron seems like a very simple job, and indeed it is, if you do it right. If you do it wrong, you will have major problems. Possibly the worst case scenario is to turn the finished diameter over size, and then force the part into the hole. And then the cast iron bed plate cracks, and the thing that you're working on is irreparably damaged. I much prefer the Loctite principle, more about that later. Many years ago when I first started model engineering, I decided to build a Martin Evans design simplex steam locomotive. And indeed I did build it, I built the chassis anyway. I could never afford the boiler in those days. When I was quartering the wheels onto the axles, I'd read lots of things in Model Engineer magazine about pressing the axles into the wheel using a vise. And I had six perfectly turned locomotive wheels for the simplex. But after my first attempts at pressing the axles into the wheels, I ended up with only four wheels, because I'd damaged two of them. Two of the wheels had nice cracks from the hole in the centre to the outside edge of the crankwebs. So we don't want to be doing that with this job. Once the outside diameter is arrived at, with much use of a micrometer, it's time to sectionalise the piece into four. And here I'm removing the centre hole that we made with the centre drill, in order to put the live centre in for the machining operation. 
Finally, you will end up with four pieces of cast iron, all of them one inch long and all of them exactly 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And what you need to do first is try a test fit. Then apply some Loctite 603 to the piece and tap it in again all the way down. Then all you have to do is apply the same procedure to the other three holes and you will end up with fully plugged holes with nice cast iron plugs. So when you remark them out and drill the holes in this cast iron, the drill will not wander about, it will go through the work as if it's just one piece of cast iron. Had you have used steel or another kind of metal, the drill would have wandered into the softer cast iron and you may have been worse off than you started. Time to clean up the work with a file to make sure everything is perfectly level. If your measuring was accurate in the first place, you shouldn't find many problems with the part protruding. With experience in model engineering, you do learn to educate your eye. Here I'm using a washer to find the centre. From experience I can actually find the centre quite accurately here, but I'm sure purist engineers will scoff at this. If you wish, measure the component and scribe the lines to drill the holes. Either way you're still going to have to centre punch the position. The reason I'm not measuring on this base plate is it's very badly made to start with. Even the casting is not symmetrical. Something went wrong with the pattern making. It's easy enough to use a washer like this to find the center. The first center punch needs to be gentle. Then you have a look at it to make sure it's in the center. And if so, deepen the center punch and then over to the drilling machine. Do not try and go through with the finished size, which of course is 5 sixteenths of an inch. Here I'm piloting with a quarter inch drill. When drilling cast iron, be careful that the chips don't jam the drill, but really cast iron is a beautiful metal to work with. It contains a lot of graphite and is self-lubricating up to a point. And that's why it's perfect for bearings and cylinders and anywhere where metal slides against metal. The carbon content of cast iron is very evident when you machine it because you get covered in a black dust. Finally, here's the finished job. And you can see by what's on screen at the moment how far off these holes were. But now they're in the right place, the whole thing looks a lot better. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.